Do you typically have the parts in mind already, or do you just like to get in the room, listen to a demo or a a little version of the song, and then just go with your instincts? What's your go-to process for coming up with guitar parts? Yeah, 95% of the time, I like to just uh, pull it out of the air Yeah, without any preconceptions. Occasionally, on certain songs, if it requires a part to be worked out, uh, I will do it. But especially with this band, I like to just give uh, give them a sketch of what we're going to do and then play live and let things happen. What do those sketches typically look like for you? Well, it'd be a chord structure and some lyrics, uh, a verse and chorus, bridge, a uh, map of some sort. Sure. And there might be a place, okay, this is where the chorus is. Okay, this part uh, is a solo. And then I like to play the solos live during the tape. Yeah. And at the end, okay, this may go on 30 seconds. It might go on a minute. Just follow me and I'll signal you when we're going to stop. <laughs> yeah. And then just see what happens, you know, and uh, you got to be brave and fearless. But when you get it, it's, it's a kinetic uh, moment that I think communicates to the listener. Absolutely. And how do you recreate that live when you play... 30, 50, 100 shows in a row. Well, uh, the good thing about recording that way is you already know how to play it that way. So when we go to, we were, we've been rehearsing the last three or four weeks and it sounds incredible, but it sounds just like the record because that's the way we played the track. So we don't have to study it. We just play it again like we did before. Yeah. And uh, it's been pretty easy. You know, it's a great band. They, they're quick on their feet and uh, there's not a lot of uh, struggle with that. Three to four weeks of rehearsal. That feels to me like a lot of rehearsal. That's a lot, but you know, and we've the Dirty Knobs have never rehearsed that much. Yeah. I played in two years. Sure. We have two albums worth of material that we want to showcase. You know, in the past, we would do a, a, you know, a little club or a bar or a theater, and we might rehearse for two or three days and do a lot of covers and stuff. Mm-hmm. But this is a different thing because we have two albums out. We want to play a lot of the songs from the album. So we want to be really tight. Yeah. Two years, you get a little rusty. So it took us a couple of weeks to really just kind of get the juices flowing. But now we're starting to really sound good. When it comes to recording those things live, when it comes to that process that you're talking about, really just kind of showing the band, the song, the structure, and working it out in the room, it can be a difficult thing or a, a a high pressure moment to feel like I need to create iconic parts right now for this thing I just heard. And you seem to be a master of creating iconic parts that live on forever. How do you train yourself to be able to create iconic parts? And do you have some sort of mindset that others might not be thinking about when they're recording parts? Well, I can't speak to others and uh, thank you, but a lot of it's just luck, you know, and I think I just play the way I play and I'm influenced by what turned me on when I was learning to play. Mm-hmm. And I try to emulate that or, or I emulate it whether I try or not, like in the sixties, you know? Sure. I grew up in the Renaissance era for guitar and great bands and great songs. And that's the stuff I still listen to, you know, the kinks, the Beatles, the animals, the, Yardbirds, the zombies, the stones, and that stuff's in my DNA now. So when I play, um, hopefully some of those good elements might come through in the way I approach things. But I don't think like, oh, I've got to write an iconic guitar part. You know, I never get that mindset at all. It's all just like get in the moment and just hope some magic happens, you know. And if you're really having fun and you're confident, you'll probably catch some magic. 